Let's talk about the final exam of parenting today on 7 at 7. Hey everybody, good morning. It is Friday. Finally. Oh man. And you know, it was such a beautiful fall. That's over. <laughs> Summer again. 90 degrees again. Or hope, 98. Hope you enjoyed yes. fall. It was oh, lovely. It's yeah, it's Texas. Our fall last three days. It's over. No, maybe it's going to come back, but this weekend it feels like it's going to be a little warm. A little warm. Hey, there is a tree on, on the church grounds that believes it's fall. It's trying. It's turning colors. It's trying. The leaves are already falling. It's, it's doing its very best. Or it's not going to make it much longer. I'm not <laughs> sure which dying. one. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's talk about the final exam of parenting. And I think the final exam of parenting is the eight weeks after your kid goes to college you think that's it oh man i think it is have, have, you, have you been through this by chance you, two times now oh it's brutal isn't it and it's really not any easier the second time than it was the, maybe worse in your it's case horrible the mine second too because it's like oh this is the last one it was the last one right it's over <laughs> it's tough final it's tough. exam or the eight weeks of weeping i don't know where you're it's going hard. with this but now on the other side of it to be honest like the empty nest thing is also okay there are some real upsides to that so and parenting after that there's some good things too but it's kind of the final exam it's at least the midterm midterm it, it i'll at, give you midterm. it at least demonstrates that like did we do the right things did we say the right things what happens next and what we want to believe is that by the time our kids graduate from college they have made the, the faith of the family the faith that is their faith mm. the faith that's one li once lived in mom or dad or mom and dad and lived in our church now really lives inside of them it's theirs mm. and they take it with them to college and so as they go to college they've got some decisions to make about friendships and relationships now, when you went to college, how many people did you know at the college you were going to go to? Oh, how many people did I know? I could probably count them on one hand. Yeah, four or five. Four or five. Right, which is good. I mean, Which was few, really kind of a lot for right? most people. In my case, I did not know one person. None. That I was going to college. Not I had actually already met Julie, so that was nice, but I didn't really know her, and I didn't oh. think she would care. But it, I mean, I knew her name, so that was something, and maybe she. And look at how that turned out for it you. It did work out pretty well. But <laughs> at the time, great. I didn't know anybody, and I remember leaving home and it being like kind of a hard thing, right? I mm. drove by myself. How far were you? Well, it was Perryton in the days if you have to go out 55 miles an hour to school. So, so it took you. Abilene was like six days away. It was like forever. <laughs> On a horse. <laughs> I feel <laughs> both ways. It was terrible. 55 was so slow. It was slow. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so I went to school and didn't know anybody, and then a lot of our kids don't. You're making all new friends, mm. and you know, like when you go mm -hmm. to college or maybe you're going off in the work world all of a sudden all these new people that are around you and you're making new relationships and you're kind of showing do you know how to build relationships by the way you'll remember that's our theme this week is we want our kids not to be lonely to have friends absolutely so now they're leaving the friends we've been able to create for them and now they're making new ones in the place where they are and mm -hmm. that is kind of a test big about test have we helped them to make the right kind of friends or friends at all and mm -hmm. so they go off to school so Today, I want to talk a little bit about the things that we're working toward and the things we can say to our kids in those moments when they leave school that can most help them in that moment of kind of looking for what happens next. So really, you're talking about a pop quiz that the parent doesn't even take. Really, you're sending your kid off. They're the ones taking the quiz, and you're just sitting back to see how did we fare what in this? What kind of grade do you what get? What kind of grade did we get? <laughs> right. That's no, a little scary. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Current senior, I mean, college freshman. Uh, yes. But you're currently taking the quiz that your mom and on, that will grade your mom and dad on how they did. Uh, that mm. is the case. So we've, we've helped them all through the years to learn how to look for the right kind of people to be friends with and how to give away love and how to be kind and compassionate and care for others, to be gracious and forgiving mm. uh, when people make mistakes, to make commitments to people and stick with them even when they foul up, oh. right? To look mm. for people that you can be equally yoked with, to use like the New Testament phrase for being the kind of friend that shares your values and your commitment to Christ. All these things are things we've been trying to teach them and show them through the years. And now they go off to school or they go off to the workplace or we just saw my a, yes, they know, go off to oh, one of the armed services. Yes, they're in the Navy. Yes. What kind of friends they can make? Do they know how to make friends or not? And they show up and they do. Or hopefully they know some things about it. Right. And you will know as a parent very quickly if they are making friends or if they're in their dorm room 24-7. Yeah, and this is one of our five things we think we need to give to our kids, a gift to give our kids. It's about the abundant life. And so it's not bad to be thinking about the fact there is a pop quiz coming for our mm. family and for my child. And all through the years three-year-olds until they're 18. I'm getting them ready for this moment where they're going to need to build friends on their own and to get the right kinds of friends and build the right kind of friendships. And mm -hmm. so I, I got to get busy. I got work to do. You absolutely right? have to get busy. And we know that there's all these statistics that are out there that kind of 
scare us just a little bit right we know already that that the world reports that they're lonely like Mm -hmm. those numbers are ugly at least two-thirds of the people every time we see the survey over and over Uh, there's new statistics that are coming out even that tell us that children of faith or children who have grown up in the church graduate high school go off Uh, some of those numbers are 70 percent of them walk away never Mm -hmm. to go back and so i think there's a connection between this statistic and this friendship that we're talking about yeah, right. the practical advice that we would have for our kids and the practical advice that as parents we would want to help our kids know and that is waste no time find a church yeah right so god's answer to loneliness one of his most important ones is the local church mm. and for a lot of our kids it's the first time they've had the chance to go out and to apply this truth in a way that will really be super meaningful to their life, you know, on their own. Mm -hmm. And if they've been active in the student ministry and they've been active in the church, they've known the great friendships and the camaraderie and the relationships that can be a part of the church family. And that's true for a lot of our kids here. And my hope is, is that that experience has made them hungry for that as they go off to college. Mm -hmm. And so they go searching for it. And so we ask all of our kids that graduate from here, Find a church by the end of October. Don't mess around. There's never going to be a church that's perfect like the church you're in, but go find a church, (laughs) go to worship, and get into a small group. Absolutely. You have to. It's really easy to to fall into that trap of just sneaking in the front door, sitting on the back row, hoping nobody talks to you, certainly not filling out that I'm here kind of questionnaire, and quickly walking out the door and trying to check that off your list. But that's not the connection that we know that our kiddos need. You you don't just find a church service that you want to listen to mm-hmm. you have got to find a small group yeah right. and allow those people to get to mm-hmm. know you and you know them and share life with them and make friends now often our students that go off and do this will come back and say I've suddenly made some of the best friends in my mm-hmm. life like I've only been at college for six weeks I know but these people they know me and I love them and they love me and I've shared all these things about my life and these friendships feel so deep and part of it's because they're at an age in their life where they can build deeper relationships mm-hmm. they're also at a time in their life where they need deeper relationships they're all going through the same thing at the same time mm-hmm. they've all left home and they are clinging to one another and this friendship that they are creating at that particular moment. And I think in the best case scenarios, we've taught our kids how to go make friendships and how to build communities so that they are the catalysts Mm -hmm. who are building those small groups and taking a lead in bringing other people around them into their circle or into the community that they're helping to create. You know, Mm -hmm. in the best case scenarios, I wouldn't want our students to be the kind that are kind of waiting for somebody else to build community, but they would be the kind that would they go out and create it wherever, Mm -hmm. whatever school they're going to, if they're in the Navy, whatever the case might be. And I love hearing stories back about our kids being in that spot, building great friendships and coming home to talk about them. Right. And that's been one of the beautiful parts just as a mom. Like we've got to watch that this year where Maddie went out and she could sometimes be timid. Right. And so she had to figure this thing out. And then hearing her where people in her FCA group are asking her to be a small group leader. She's like, Mom, why are they asking me? Uh I'm like, because you know how to create friendship and community. Mm -hmm. And so watching them start Bible studies and and become new small group leaders in these different places is really a rewarding part. And all the stuff we're doing around here as a church the disciple nows and the camps Mm. and the vacation bible school leadership we ask our kids to serve in and the mission trips they go on all of these are places where Mm. we train our students to be able to build this kind of community take the lead step out risk getting to know new people and all of those things prepare them to go off and to make great relationships on their own well this has been a really good week great week gosh so much important stuff so much so that i was telling uh our team earlier that i think this is going to become the core of a series next year sometime so know that more of it is coming but for now more to come (laughs) mom and dads get out there and help your kids learn how to love well and to be loved it's an important gift that you give them on the path to abundant life love you guys have a great weekend we'll see you on sunday